Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well this week we've got another video about running but it's the important topic of a crossover gait and when or if you should actually correct that. Now the thing about this client Joshua is that he not only wants to run but he wants to run fast and if you want to run fast you're looking at economy of movement because anything that reduces your economy movement means you're expending more energy than you need to to actually run. And that means you're bound to be slower than you could be. So the first thing we're going to do is look at Joshua's general form so that we can see how his running looks. We're then going to look at his crossover gait. And because he does actually have a crossover gait, that's a spoiler for you, we're going to actually go through three things that he could use to correct that. So wait to the end, you'll get those three things to actually correct a crossover gait. Here's Joshua running normal speed. He's doing about 172 steps a minute and he looks powerful and he looks relaxed. However, if you look at Josh in real slow motion and we look at his right leg just about to land there and take a line 90 degrees to the ground, uh, roughly where his centre of gravity would be. So we see he's really landing well in front of that and his heel and ankle are in front of his knee as he does that. So that's creating a huge braking force and a shock wave right up that leg. Because of that he also dips into that ankle and his head is going up and down instead of straight along. And his left leg lands there and we'll just take that line across to its centre of gravity and again well in front with his ankle and heel in front of his knee and that's again braking force that we don't need so one thing we're going to do to improve the overstriding and consequently this undulation is to increase Joshua's cadence, the amount of steps he takes per minute. Remember at the beginning I said he was doing about 172. I'd really like that to be 185 to 195 steps per minute. And if he does that, he'll slightly shorten his stride, but he'll get that foot landing underneath his center of gravity, which is key for him to have that steady head as he runs along. Now let's look at Joshua from behind so we can have a look at that crossover gate and how extreme it actually is. Let's go back to the computer. Now here once again I've stopped the action as it's mid-flight and Josh is just about to put his left foot down. Let's go mid-stride here to a certain extent and we can see that his knees are virtually crossing at the back and I've already drawn a line of 90 degrees if we put that in the centre of his body, there's a couple of things happening here. His left foot is crossing that line completely. And if you look at his hips, one seems up and one seems down. So there's a drop of the hip on the right hand side when he's planting his left leg. We also see his head is left of that centre line, which means he's also bending his body over to the left. That's primarily because his glute medius is weak. So if your glute medius is weak, you're going to drop that hip. Dropping that hip moves this leg over. Moving this leg over means you've really come across the center and you can see what's happening to his foot there as well. And as we take that forward, you can see his knees are actually hitting each other as they come through virtually, as they, they come through there. Now, if we go onto the right side, And just move that down and get it a little bit bigger. Move this line back there to the centre. We can see that his foot is still crossing the centre line, but we don't have that drop in the hip. And because we don't have the drop in the hip, we also have it dead centre with his head. Now, other things happen when you have a crossover gait. Um, if you look at Joshua's landing point, you can see that he supinates. You have to supinate because your, your leg is angled that way. You have to supinate and then you have to pronate quickly. And you can see that huge movement that that ankle makes as he lands. And if we take the angle of the hip there, we go straight down and across. 
we have an approximately 11 degree angle that his hip is making with his, his leg, or his leg's making with his hip, um, from straight. Now straight would be the strongest move. Um, and this is very weak because what we're doing is because it's pointing to the side, because we're angled, we've got a lot of force against the ankle, got a lot of force against the knee, and we've actually got a lot of force against the hip. And all of that can potentially lead to injury. Now with the right leg, We again supinate, you can see that happening, we're twisting the foot out as well, and then you see that bounce back, but it's not quite as bad as the other side. So that really was a great visual representation of how with a crossover gait, your leg is actually at an angle to your hip. We really want a straight motion of a piston actually working, but what we have there is a wonky piston. And a wonky piston is not as strong as a straight piston. It also creates a lot of force at the ankle, at the knee, and at the hip. And that, over time, especially if you want to run fast, can lead to injury. So if you have a crossover gait, it's important to do a couple of things. Firstly, you really do have to improve the strength of your glutes. And you can do that by doing exercises in the gym. The next thing you have to do is improve your actual Gait. You're trying to change your muscle memory, and that's quite difficult. So some kind of drill will actually improve that and hopefully lead him into a better running form in the future. Let's go to the gym and I'll show you what I mean. So the first exercise we're going to do is the crab walk. We want a stretch band just above the knees, literally just above the knees. And we're going to be in a slight sitting position, very slight. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk sideways purposely with each leg. We're going to come back and we're going to go the other way. Now obviously it would be ideal if you had a bigger area than I have here, but I'm inside and it's winter and it's very cold outside, so I'm showing you this. We really want a nice stretch and a nice control as you go out and back, out and back. And what we don't want to see is a collapse of the knee. We want that knee to be solid as it goes through. So that's the first exercise, the crab walk. So the second exercise we're going to do is really going to strengthen that glute. And it's a side plank on the knee with the other leg raised. So we're going to go into the plank position and we're then going to raise the other leg to level and hold that for 10 seconds. Now you're going to repeat this 10 times. And when you repeat it 10 times, it really does work that glute well. So the third exercise we're going to do is a penguin walk. And in this, what we're going to do is we're going to hitch our hip up and then we're going to walk forward with that and try and place our foot straight. I'm going to do this walking along for a few steps. with so up, plant straight, up, plant straight. And what we'll do is we'll eventually just take that after about 10 steps into a run and hopefully that will train our muscle memory into a slightly different movement than it has before. So that's a penguin walk. And instead of doing like a penguin who walks round, what we're trying to do is up and control it forward and step. Up and control it forward and step. And keep those hips really nicely pointing forward. In all of our running, we should remember that massive forces working through a weakness is a recipe for disaster. And that's exactly here what we're trying to avoid. OK, so hopefully that's helped you if you have a crossover gait or if what some of you know has a crossover gait. And that's it for this week. See you next week. Keep well. Bye bye. <music>